Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I just uh, need to have a, a several announcements before we start. Uh, we have a little change in our panel. Uh, unfortunately, um, uh, Carl Keane and Mary Stromberger could not be here with us today. Uh, so we have uh, uh, Dan Mantle uh, going to talk to us about the plant microbiome instead of Mary. And um, yeah, so uh, because we are missing uh, one panelist than uh, chairman, we are going to have each one of us slightly longer presentations. So um, yeah, that's the, some housekeeping notes. Okay. Um, so I'm going to present uh, to you today uh, the introduction to the interconnection between uh, soil, um, food, and uh, human microbiomes. And uh, soil is uh, providing quite a large number of ecosystem services, and it is becoming recognized, as we all heard today, for its diverse influences on human health. Some of the more recognized influences uh, include um, uh, the soil uh, fertility and its influence on uh, crop nutrition and human nutrition. Uh, soil is a sink for toxins. We heard about uh, soil contamination and all that. Uh, there is the control of air quality via the regulation of greenhouse gases uh, emission. Um, so uh, there are uh, some less recognized um, roles of the soil in uh, human health, and these are the providing, the providing of shelter, clothing, and fuel uh, materials. Um, just uh, working out. Okay. So there is quite a lack uh, of original uh, research that is designed with specific, with the specific aim of quantifying or assessing the links between soil and human health. So if we look at most of the literature uh, that is uh, uh, providing information on the connection between soil and human health, including soil biodiversity, then you can see that it's mostly consistent of reviews. So people bringing up these ideas that there are links between soil and human health. However, there is a lack of specific uh, research projects that are quantifying those links and um, showing the mechanisms of, or the pathways uh, of um, these links between uh, soil and human health. Um, so, some examples that I wanted to, show, to, uh, to give is, uh, for example, the suggestion that uh, biodiverse soil provides us some protections from or better control of crop and human pathogens. So this came as a conclusion from some uh, earlier studies, but these studies were not, connect, not designed specifically uh, to look uh, at the, those links between the soil and, uh, and human health. So is really higher biodi biodiversity protects a crop from, uh, from uh, pathogens? Are there any specific uh, studies that show that? Okay, so these are some, uh, some information that is missing. Uh, we heard about antibiotic leaking into soil uh, through uh, animal husbandry or uh, from manure. Um, is it uh, really increasing the antibiotic resistant um, bacteria numbers or abundance in the soil? And how does that then reach uh, the human uh, population? So is, the, is there any then links between those uh, antibiotic-resistant bacteria in the soil and uh, human health. Okay, so this panel is going to uh, talk about some aspects of interconnecting this um, uh, soil um, issue with food and uh, human health. Okay, so we talk a lot about the microbiome, and the microbiome has been mentioned several times in, uh, uh, we, uh, with the panelists today, but what is the microbiome? And the microbiome is the total sum of microbes that are present, that include bacteria, fungi, archaea. It will also include viruses and protists and nematodes, so quite a large uh, variety of uh, microorganisms, but 
We have to understand that most of the studies that have been done so far on the microbiome mainly included uh, bacteria and fungi because these are the easiest ones to, uh, ampl to amplify their DNA in the soil and to analyze that. Um, when we talk about microbiome, uh, then we talk about particular locations. So it can be the microbiome of the entire human body. So that's the human microbiome. But then you can talk about different parts of the body. The gut microbiome will be different to the skin microbiome, the reproductive system. So we have to be clear about what part, what location we are talking about. If we talk about the soil microbiome, it can be the surface soil or deep soil. It can be the rhizosphere around the roots. So the soil microbiome is not just one thing. It's a whole collection of different microbiomes. The microbiomes are also being considered in relation to particular location, but also in relation to particular time or particular conditions, under particular condition. The gut microbiome of a particular person can be different on one day and the next, or in several days' time, depending on what uh, food has been consumed, for example. The rhizosphere or the, or the soil microbiome may be um, di different in the same location with different temperatures uh, or different moisture conditions. So this is the, the microbiome is dynamic. It's not something that is fixed um, at all times. Um, now, since the microbes have many different roles in every environment, they have a large number of ecosystem services, then any change to the microbiome or to microbes uh, will have also effect on the health, the health of the entire system, no matter what system we are uh, referring to. Um, now, microbiome uh, analysis is uh, far from being perfect. And there are many technical challenges in analyzing the microbiome. Uh, we are limited by technology. And uh, Josh Jeffens is going to talk to us uh, later on uh, more about the challenges uh, in, um, in analyzing uh, the microbiome. Uh, the question is being asked, what are the possible connections between the soil microbiome and the human microbiome? So that takes us to a little bit more complex uh, situation. Uh, we heard about the One Health and the fact that human, animal, and environmental health are being interconnected. And these links are recognized under the, the One Health approach. And when you look at this figure here, you can see that the soil and human health are very much under this title of the One Health, can be considered under One Health. The human microbiome can be directly influenced by the soil microbiome. Soil microbes can be inhaled or ingested, carried on dust particles, so they can enter directly into the lungs or through the digestive system. Um, they may also voluntarily ingested when geophagy is practiced, or we also heard today about uh, children simply just eating dirt. Uh, Carl Webkin is going to talk more about the, the soil uh, microbiome and soil biodiversity. Um, other ways that uh, soil microbes can infect humans through direct contact with the skin, for example. So there can be a direct link between the soil microbiome and the human uh, microbiome. Plant microbiome, which, in, which can include the rhizosphere, which is a uh, on, on the surrounding the roots or endophytes inside the plant, that can influence the human microbiome. And uh, Dan Mantra is going to talk to us a bit more about the plant uh, microbiome and its connection to, the so to human health. Um, the plant microbiome may, may enter the human body through consumption of, for example, fresh vegetables or fruits or nuts. And we heard a little bit about that already today. Animal microbiomes, and here we have to consider those that interact with human. It, it can be uh, through livestock and then consumption of meat, for example, or the um, a farmer working with livestock and coming in contact with livestock. But also, 
we can uh, look at uh, animal in the <clears throat> from the point of view of pets like uh, we all have interaction uh, with pets, and uh, there are studies that actually show that families share microbiome, they share microbial communities with their pets, so that's quite interesting as well to remember. So, um, okay, so... Um, from, the, from the point of view of, 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 a, um, of a food, I put the food microbiome in a different category, and this is before the, this is uh, the main reason for that is because uh, food production goes through quite massive processing and storage, uh, the, the, so that the microbial communities in the in the food in the in the um, uh, 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 plants and animal is uh, very much uh, changed by the time that it gets to the consumer. So the food um, and microbial communities are different from the raw material that we start with through processing and through storage. Uh, other than the direct link uh, that, that we see between the soil and the plant and animal uh, and, the, and the human microbiome, uh, soil microbes can reach the human body carried on plant or animal material. So we have this connection also between the soil microbiome, obvious connection to the plant microbiome and the animal microbiome, and there is um, influences back and forth. For example, we heard about uh, animal uh, manure that is being applied to the soil, so there we have the animal microbiome affecting the soil microbiome, um, etc. So they are all influenced uh, by each other. Um, so antibiotics, I added antibiotics to this, uh, to this uh, chart, and this is in ant antibiotic arrest or control certain microbes, and because of that, it obviously has an effect on the entire microbiome because there are obvious microbial interactions in every community, and if you arrest or kill a particular member of the community, you have an effect on the entire community. These effects are less considered, they are very known in the human uh, and, and, and uh, discussed about the human microbiome, but they're less considered in the context of the soil or the plant environment. The question arises, for example, and we already heard about it today, would antibiotics, for example, that leaking into the soil, would they increase the population of antibiotic-resistant bacteria in the soil? And would this have a downstream effect on antibiotic resistance in animal or in human. Um, this uh, topic is currently investigated in my lab, but also Carl Webkin is going to talk to us about his research about antibiotics and its effect on the soil um, communities. Uh, finally, when uh, the human microbiome, and I have it here, the human microbiome microbiome can also spread into the environment, and this is via, for example, air, airborne droplets, when we sneeze, when we cough, uh, body liquids, and feces, so the human microbiome is also spread into the environment. Um, so one could see in this figure that the soil and human health fits perfectly into the One Health um, approach. Now, when, we, when I considered the big picture of linking the soil and the human microbiomes, I have arranged this, the research gap into four categories, uh, or maybe four research themes or groups. Uh, research on the link between the soil and plant, as the soil and animal or human directly, uh, looking at uh, plant and human interaction, uh, the microbiomes, and the antibiotic uh, story uh, related to that. And so when we look at the soil and the animal or human interaction, then there are many things that we need to know about it. What are, for example, the mode of transfer of microbes from one system to another? Is it through vectors or is it direct? Would microbes from the, from the soil survive in the human body on the different human parts, for example, in the human gut? They are very different environments. Um, how can we detect 
pathogens or for that extent also probiotic agents in the soil? How can we quantify it? Can we control their presence in the soil, their, their abundance? Um, and is there a real connection between biodiversity and health? So is really, bio, for example, biodiverse soil, are they really uh, beneficial for crops and uh, human? I said yes, but we have to yet prove it. Um, uh, the other, uh, when we look at, uh, at the soil and plant, uh, then uh, we have to, um, to look at the rhizosphere and the plant microbiome. What would be the in influence of management practices on the uh, soil and uh, plant microbiomes? And again, we go into the question of diversity and health. Uh, when we look at the uh, plant and human, then there are questions of uh, fresh plants versus processed. So what is the processing going to do in the storage to the uh, plants that we are consuming? Is there, an, is there an optimal microbiome in plants, okay, that is optimal for their health or for our health, for human health? And is the one optimal microbiome for all? Okay, so certain microbiomes in plants, are they beneficial or would, would they be beneficial for health of all humans or is it dependent, is it individual? Um, with the antibiotics, um, we are looking at antibiotic resistant bacteria in feces or manure and uh, are they going to be leaked uh, into the soils in animal husbandry, okay? Uh, would that increase antibiotic-resistant bacteria in soil? And would those antibiotic-resistant bacteria can go back or, or find their way back into the human? Would it be via plants uh, or would it be any direct uh, transfer? So this transfer from soil to human uh, is a big question and the survival of the organism inside the human body. Okay, so uh, the last, in the last slides, uh, I answered the several questions uh, that uh, were given to us uh, to cover, and uh, one of the benefits and impact of res this research will be the understanding of the actual versus so far the assumed links between soil and human microbiomes, whether they can be controlled, and if so, how. And it will help us to inform agricultural and medical industries and policymakers about uh, those links and how they can be controlled. Expertise re required, just like everybody else said so far, in this kind of research, we will definitely need microbiologists and bioinformatics, computer science, but a whole list of other uh, expertise in soil science, botany, uh, agriculture, histology, medicine, etc., food science. The duration of the research depends on the amount of funding. So if we get a really large amount of funding, we have a philanthrope who decides to support us, we may be able to do it in less than five years. Other than that, maybe five to ten years. And uh, probably for, to support such four groups, I look at at least uh, 20 million in, in five years. Uh, possible sources of funding, there is a large range, and the panelists will talk more specifically about the research funders uh, that can be, um, one can approach for the particular, for each particular research.